Hi, I'm Megan Feeney with the Mersey Focus News. And I'm James Hurst with all your local spot. The top stories. Ambulance and hospital strikes continue with all the 15,000 workers taking part across the UK. A fleet of new trains have been introduced to the Mersey Rail, starting at the Kirby Line. And news just in, Everton manager Frank Lampard has been sacked. But first, strike action across the North West across the North West has desert, seen deserted hospital car parts and empty ambulance stations. Porters and health technicians joined the ambulance workers from three main health unions on the picket lines. Lois Adashile reports. Union members at Unison, GMB and Unite have spent the day on picket lines across the North West, following three days of action last month and promises of more to come. They want to see double digit wage increases to match inflation which is currently running at around 11 percent coming together in support of each other because essentially we're not asking for the pay rise we're just asking for pay level with inflation because we've had a massive pay cut for over 10 years despite thousands on the picket lines ambulance workers have maintained what they call life and limb cover answering emergency call outs but the health secretary says it's hugely disappointing that some ambulance workers in England and Wales are continuing to take industrial action over pay. He wants more constructive talks to be held. But the health workers say they need to be paid for what they do. Going, not staying within the NHS, but looking at other jobs. Some of our, some of the, the slightly lower paid members of staff, you can get more money working at McDonald's than you can for working in the NHS. So it's it's a generalised, the, the whole service is just run down now. With ambulance workers back on strike across England and Wales, tensions between ministers and unions seems to be getting worse. United's General Secretary is accusing the government of lying and not being an honest partner in pay talks. The government is adamant that it wants to come to a resolution, but the country cannot afford to give the pay rises. Lois Adeshili reports, Mersey Focus, Warrington. More strikes to follow across Merseyside with bin men and cleaners. Kieran Deer has more. Strike action, action starts, starts today for bin workers across Liverpool and hopes to finish on Saturday the 28th. GMB union members will not be on strike due to already reaching an agreement of a 10.5% pay increase and an additional day of annual leave for lower paid workers, with higher paid workers getting a 4% pay increase. Expect delayed collection of rubbish and filthier streets, as members of Unite Strike Union will not be working. The General Secretary for Unite Strikes, Sharon Graham, said, Our members play a crucial role in keeping Liverpool clean, and they deserve a fair day's pay. LSSL and Liverpool Council can't sweep this issue under the carpet any longer. With a conclusion already reached for GMB members, there is hope that the Unite members could also come to an agreement. Kieran Day, Mercy Focus. Nurses on Merseyside are also preparing for a second wave of strikes. After joining the picket lines across the region on Wednesday, their members are demanding improved patient safety and better nursing pay to tackle staff shortages. Government ministers have refused to take action and if progress isn't made by the end of January, they will continue their strike action on the 6th and 7th of February. Olivia Beattie reports. Thousands of nurses are back on strike across the country, taking matters into their own hands, demanding for fair pay and improved public patient safety. Since the Conservative have been in power, funding has been cut and resources have been limited, as the government has failed to take action. NHS nurses are a critical part of the health system, yet are facing the biggest strain. RCN are calling for a 19% pay rise, but are preparing to meet the government halfway. Many are abandoned in their posts due to pressures, while student doctors and nurses are dropping out due to the overwhelming workloads. ...have many changes compared to their old fleet. Abigail Ford reports. The highly anticipated new trains are here and they didn't disappoint when they arrived on the Kirby line today at 10 to 11. The new fleet of 53 trains include door buttons, Wi-Fi access, more wheelchair and cycle areas, a sliding step that meets the platform edge and many more updates. The main aim is to make the journey accessible and enjoyable for everyone. For people with disabilities for instance or for mums and dads with push chairs and prams, I watched today at how easy it is to get on and off our trains and that accessibility thing is really really important but the bit that nobody will really have seen 
is the fact that these things have got battery technology. Journalists, train fans and people just wanting to get to Kirby waited patiently on the Northern Line at Liverpool Central. Due to a number of obstacles like COVID-19 and strikes, construction has been delayed significantly since 2018. The public were excited to see that they could finally access the trains replacing the iconic Mersey Rail fleet built in the late 1970s. Well, are they going to operate successfully? Are they going to be reliable? Can people rely on the service? Well, if they don't and they can't, then people will in the end resort to using their cars. There's certainly a lot more options for uh, wheelchair users, people with buggies. Nice safer way of travelling, more economic. The city. Members of the public helped to design these £500 million publicly owned trains, kickstarting Liverpool City region's campaign to put the public back into public transport. This is a huge step towards building the London style transport system Mayor Steve Rotherham envisioned. From the world's first passenger railway powered by Stevenson's rocket to the Dockers' umbrella, the Liverpool City region has been leading the transformation of British railways for centuries. Where we lead, others often follow. Once the trains are running on the Kirby line, the rest of the fleet will be phased into the Northern and Wirral lines through 2023. Abigail Ford, Mersey News Live. Liverpool celebrated the Chinese New Year this weekend in the city centre. A range of activities and performances took place. Molly Graff reports. Hundreds of people made their way to the Great George Square in Liverpool this weekend to celebrate the Chinese New Year and welcome in the Year of the Rabbit. There was plenty to take in with a wide range of food stores, rides and a carnival. As well as this, people enjoyed the live performances that took place from groups such as Mavima and Bring the Fire Project who completed their annual popular fire show which lasted 55 minutes. As well as this, the martial arts club Hung Ga Kung Fu also completed their annual line dance. Lion dancing and dragon dancing in the city centre. Um, we're a martial arts club, um, but it's our role as a martial arts club to keep the divisions alive. So traditionally, only practitioners of Kung Fu were allowed to do the lion dance. The celebrations brought in 20,000 people and a revenue of over £600,000. Good news for those in Lancashire County. Stagecoach have just started their new 319 Skellensdale Kirby service operating in partnership with Lancashire, Lancashire County Council. Matt Davis, Managing Director of Stagecoach Merseyside and South Lancashire, said the, the new route will provide a much needed improvement in public transport connectivity to Liverpool for residents of the West Lancashire and is much greener way to travel than using a car. The stylish single deck buses have spacious legroom, comfortable seating, free Wi-Fi and USB charging ports. The service will connect with onward rail journeys from Kirby train station to Liverpool Central Station and aiming to provide efficient and fast bus services every 30 minutes. Now on to sport with James. Thanks Megan. And in sport, the big story. After days of speculation, Everton manager Frank Lampard has been sacked. I've been following the latest developments. Everton's glory days fade away after another loss on Saturday against West Ham. The Hammers beat the Toffees 2-0, with Jared Bowen scoring both. Frank Lampard's side have now had one win in the last 13 competitive games, six of these being lost at home. Everton fans are in shock at the gradual decline of their club. Now we've had no plan um, of how they want to run the club. We've been in gradual decline for years. Bill Kenwright, Shady, Denise Barrett, Baxendale, Graham Sharp, Grant Ingalls. There's no effective running of the club. They're all passing responsibility to each other. And the gradual decline of us now for years is all coming through. And I think that's why we're in the situation we're in. Everton are painfully securing their spot in the Championship next season under Frank Lampard's rule. With six million just invested into their new stadium, the Blues need to bounce back. After one win in their last 13 competitive games, the Toffees are on a kamikaze nosedive into relegation. Everton dropping to the Championship will be a disaster, expecting a nearly 40 million hit to the club's revenue in the first season. Top players such as Jordan Pickford and Calvert-Lewin are all likely to leave. The new construction of Bramley Moor would not be sustainable for a Championship side. So I think, obviously, if we go down with this new stadium in the Championship, I think it would be a disaster. Um, we've been looking for a replacement for Goodison for years now. We finally got one and it could be that we're playing in the Championship in it next season. Um, the fans will still fill it out every week as they do, but I think it would be horrible for the club to have a brand new stadium in the Championship. James Hurst, 
Merseyfarkas, Liverpool. Elsewhere, Liverpool's women's game against Chelsea was abandoned six minutes in due to a frozen pitch. Chelsea boss Emma Hayes said that the game should have never started. Investment in undersoil heating is being discussed. There was stalemate at Anfield after the Reds draw bitterly to Chelsea on Saturday. Arsenal restored their five-point lead following their win against Manchester United and Haaland claims his fourth hat-trick since September against Wolves yesterday, securing a 3-0 win for Manchester City. And finally, legendary Liverpool fundraiser Mick Cullen has been airing his speedos and various other parts in freezing temperatures as he embarks on his latest fundraising adventure. The 58-year-old walking, is walking 15 miles a day in nothing but his bright blue Everton speedos and his walking boots to raise money for mental health and disadvantaged young children. And not even minus 18 degrees temperatures on Ben Nevis could stop him in his tracks. As he told us, once he thawed out. I just still don't know how we've done it. But as we got higher and higher, I just got more and more determined not to go so much. It's literally a mind out over matter and I that. This has been Megan Feeney with the latest from Mersey Focus News. And this has been James Hurst with the sports. Good night.